Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Catherine, and on this channel you'll find videos all about blindness, disability, fun hobbies that I like to do anyway, um, that I don't see many people talking about, and just general life videos, I guess. Um, I've done a lot of art videos kind of things this summer. This month, there is a theme on my channel, and that is guide dogs. September 2021 is guide dog month here on my channel, and that is to coincide with the Wagathon fundraiser that Guiding Eyes for the Blind is holding in September of 2021. Um, I got my guide dog, Caleb, from Guiding Eyes for the Blind, and so I really like when I can help them um, and help promote what they're doing because I think they're doing really important, really wonderful work. Um, and as someone who has benefited from that work, I have to say it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> um, and I'm so, so grateful every day for my my guide dog. He's, he's really changed my life dramatically. So the goal of the Wagathon, um, it's kind of like a marathon, except instead of doing it all in one go, and instead of doing it all together in one place, the Wagathon is done in bits and pieces by humans and their dogs. <laughs> over the course of a month, wherever they happen to be. So I'm doing it based out of my home here in Maine. People who live in New York or um, in California or I, probably anywhere in the world really even can participate. And the goal is that when you register, you set a, a fi financial goal that you would like to raise X number of dollars and you can track your progress and log your progress and just continue to chip away at the 26 miles <laughs> throughout the month. Um, and I just, I did it when they did their first one, I believe in... I want to say in 2019, but it might have been earlier than that. I'm honestly not sure. I don't remember. But I did it when they did their first one, and it was a lot of fun. And so I'm doing it again. I will have the link to my personal Wagathon page in the description below. And if you would like to give a donation, I would so appreciate it. Um, Guiding Eyes is 100% funded by donations, and they are not funded by the government in any way. Um, so they really rely on donations from normal people, from, from anyone. Um, it, it's really important for them to continue their work to get donations um, because they, they are not government funded at all. So... With that said, um, let's get into this week's video. Uh, again, this is Guide Dog Month, which means each video this month is going to have, oh, here comes the other dog. <laughs> um, each video this month is going to have a guide dog based theme. And so for this first video, I thought I would just tell you a little bit about how I got my guide dog um, and really how he's impacted my life. So, it's gonna be a little bit of a roundabout <laughs> part here, but my brother actually got a guide dog first. Um, my brother is two years younger than I am, but his eyesight is significantly worse than mine. Um, we have the same eye condition, but it manifests very differently in each of us. And so our entire lives, he's always kind of been the more blind one, if that makes sense, where I've always been the sort of in-between. 
I can see enough to get by and to kind of make people think that maybe I don't need as much help as I do. So I've always been kind of the more sighted one <laughs> where he's been the more blind one. So he got his dog first. And honestly, um, I didn't think I would qualify for one. I really thought they would say, no, you can see too much. You, you don't even bother applying. Um, but after Alex came back with Cosby, who was his first guide dog, um, I started to notice that he was not running into the piles of branches that get left on the sidewalks around our neighborhood. And he wasn't tripping over roots as much. And he was finding corners more easily and avoiding obstacles that I was still running into, um, which was kind of annoying. <laughs> Being the older sister and the one with more eyesight, it was kind of annoying. It's like, hey, hold up. So then that got me thinking. It was like, wow, Cosby's really helped him be a lot more independent and be able to, you know, move around, walk around more, I guess, more gracefully, more confidently. Well, gee, I want that. I'm still over here poking at the world with a stick, <laughs> um, you know, using my white cane. Hmm. And so that got me thinking. And I started talking with my brother and just saying, hey, so I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> how, how do I, how do I, you know, if I want to apply, how, how do I do that? So he actually set me up first. He said, you know, call the admissions office at Guiding Eyes because they do have an admissions office. You do have to apply. Um, and so I called... I called the head of admissions first and I just asked because I said, you know, I've always thought I had too much eyesight that, you know, you guys would say no right off the bat, just based off of the amount of eyesight that I have. And she told me, she's like, are you legally blind? Like, yes. You know, I have less, I have a five degree field of vision. <laughs> um, I am very much legally blind. And she said, well, then that's all you need. That's, that's, the first hump to get over. That's the prereq for even applying. You need to be legally blind. And in her words, dear, you are legally blind. <laughs> it felt really good to actually hear someone say that who wasn't, you know, my mother or um, my orientation mobility teacher. It just, it felt good to actually hear someone say that and kind of confirm that for me. Um, that yes, I am legally blind. Therefore, I can submit an application to have a guide dog because that is the first requirement. So I decided to apply and there was a little more back and forth, a little more thinking at the time in my life. I was a little less settled. I wasn't sure if I was going to be moving or not moving. I really wasn't sure what was happening. And so we talked about that a little bit and it was definitely decided that yes, whether I move or not, a guide dog would be very beneficial for me. And so I applied. Um, each school, and there are multiple guide dog schools, um, and so each school's application process is going to be slightly different. So if you have a guide dog from another school, um, or if you're looking at getting a guide dog and you are applying to different schools, just know that the application process will be slightly different for each place. So, um, you know, your experiences will vary <laughs> as with everything. Um, but I filled out the application. I had to get um, some paperwork filled out from my eye doctor so that they would be able to see on paper, you know, just what my eyesight was. I needed to get some paperwork filled out from my primary care provider to make sure, you know, they need to make sure that you're healthy enough, um, you know, that you can handle the amount of walking and basically upkeep that 
a guide dog requires. Um, and I also needed to um, fill out the application itself, you know, name, where I live, what kinds of activities I do. Um, and so once I got that filled out and sent in, then a little while later, I was contacted by one of their field reps. And actually it's the same one who came up to do my brother's interview um, because we live in the same area. And so, you know, you have the same one. So that was kind of cool. You know, I'd, I'd already met, I'd already met this field rep, so I already kind of knew him. So it, that made the um, sort of nervousness uh, ease a little bit because I already knew the person who was coming up to interview me. But he scheduled an interview and then he said, you know, during the interview, we talked, we talked about, again, my general activity level, what kinds of things I do, places I go. Um, they like to know what your primary mode of transportation is. Do you get rides everywhere? Do you take public transportation? Do you walk? Um, what's your general area like, city, country? How busy is it? Do you have sidewalks? Do you not? There are all kinds of things that go into making the decision and all kinds of things that even once you're accepted, um, things that they just need to know so that they are able to match you with, with an appropriate dog. Um, so we talked about all that kind of stuff and then we went for a walk. And the goal here was he needed to actually record me walking with my cane. We needed some um, footage of me crossing some streets and um, both just with my normal eyesight and then at one point he also needed to see me walking. They put like these special sort of um, glasses on that kind of whited out everything so like it wasn't like a blindfold, but um, it definitely was not my normal eyesight. It kind of took away a lot of that. And I didn't have to cross streets with that level of eyesight, um, but they just, again, the admissions team just needed to see me walking and see me using my cane to see how my orientation and mobility skills are. Because one of the ways that they decide if you are able to handle a guide dog is if you have good orientation and mobility skills. Because something that a lot of people don't really understand is that um, the dog doesn't know where you need to go and doesn't know where you want to go. <laughs> you do. You're the handler. As the handler, you're the one who needs to make the decisions about where you're turning, where you're going. Um, and you're the one who needs to keep track of where you are. So, that's one of the reasons they make sure to, you know, get some footage of you actually walking and you know, using those orientation and mobility skills because they need to know that you are able to navigate um, easily or at least competently um, because otherwise it's going to be a very frustrating and potentially dangerous experience for both you and your dog. So that happened. And then the other thing that they do and I will tell you, this is one of the most awkward, most embarrassing things you will ever do if you are applying for a guide dog. But it's really important and you just got to get over it and gotta, you got to do it anyway, but it's really awkward. Um, they do what is called a Juno walk. And Juno is a name of sort of like the fictitious guide dog. No guide dog is ever actually named a Juno. Um, that's sort of, from what I understand, among all the all the guide dog schools, that's kind of like the universal imagined guide dog. Um, so they take you on what is called a Juno walk. So you don't actually have a dog, but you do have a harness. And playing the role of the dog is your interviewer or your trainer, if you've been lucky enough to actually get into a class to receive a dog. Um, you, you do these a couple of times. So you can imagine where this is going. Your trainer, your, your um, interviewer takes the front end of the harness, holds onto it, 
you hold onto the harness handle just like you would with a regular dog and you get to tell your handler to go forward and to hop up and good boy just like you would with a dog it's the most awkward thing in the world <laughs> but it's really important that they can kind of get a feel for how you might handle a dog and it also gives them an idea of how quickly you walk which is another really important thing. That's actually one of the main things that they try and match people on first is walking speed. Because if your dog walks too fast or too slowly for your liking, for your liking, excuse me, you're not gonna be happy. And if you walk too fast or too slowly for your dog's liking, your dog isn't gonna be happy. And in either case, it doesn't work. It, it just, it's not a good match. If, if you and your dog are off in terms of pacing, it just doesn't work very well. So um, they actually will measure how quickly you walk and that Juno walk, the initial one, and then um, later the one that you do when you're actually in class are, those are very important <laughs> um, just so they can match you correctly. So that was my process for applying for a guide dog. And I was so thrilled to find out that I had been accepted. And the next step was just to wait for a class to open up. And at the time, um, you know, especially this is pre, way pre pandemic. So um, I think things have changed slightly in terms of how they're doing this now, but um, pre pandemic, you would wait until there was a class time that opened up, I believe. So I was accepted. I think I found out I was accepted at the end of February, maybe early March. And I found out that there was a class opening for their August class. So I got accepted in March and um, I left to go to Guiding Eyes for class of about a three week class um, at the end of June. So I was, or, I'm sorry, at the end of July. Uh, so I was there from the last week of July through the second week of August. So that's a little bit of a, of a stretch, you know, a little bit of time, but not too bad. Um, and I got lucky. I'm a very fast walker. And as I've learned now, um, you know, years later, fast walking guide dogs are actually fairly rare, so it can take longer to find a guide dog that walks quickly um, if you are one who also walks quickly. So I was really lucky, you know, it was less than, yeah, less than six months, just barely six months. So that was good. And for me, for where I live in Maine, I was really happy to come home with my dog in the middle of August because that meant that we still had a few months of really nice weather. We still had a few months before the snow started to come um, and make the roads really difficult to navigate um, because it's Maine and we get a lot of snow in the winter. So I was really glad to have a lot of time for us to get used to each other, for my dog to learn the roots and everything else. Um, and yeah, so that was that was that. I went to class and maybe in another video I will talk more about actual experience in class. Um, I don't think I'll ever really forget going um, and, you know, experiencing that time. But at the same time, it has been seven years now. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's been seven years. Um, so, you know, things kind of fade, fade. But if you have questions about about that, please leave them in the comments and let me know. And if you really do want to hear more about my experience actually in class at the school, I will happily make a video on that to attempt at least to answer your questions. But just in terms of how my dog has actually changed my life and made my life better, he really takes a lot of the stress away for me. Um, I did not realize until I started working with a guide dog just how stressful it is to navigate 
a crowded street with a white cane because there's so much to pay attention to. There's so much to think about. There's so much information that you need to take in when you're navigating in a crowd. People are very difficult. People are constantly moving. They can turn on a dime. They can, you know, go like right across you without any warning whatsoever. Crowds and people are horribly difficult to navigate. And so having a dog who does the navigating for you and whose job it is to pay attention to the crowd, not that I don't still have to pay attention, but I don't have to do nearly as much thinking and anticipating because that's my dog's job. That's what he does. It's his job to stop if someone stops right in front of me or if someone you know is just standing and not moving it's his job to take me around that person i don't have to figure out how far away they are and if i need to move or not move or what what's going on that's all him and i've got to tell you my guide dog in particular loves this aspect of his job he loves it now I can weave my way through a crowded city street with no problems whatsoever and I make my sighted friends nervous because they can't move through a crowd as quickly as I can move through a crowd now because my dog is just so good at that <laughs> and he lives for that kind of challenge. He loves it. Um, he has also helped in terms of just navigating sudden steps that pop up that I didn't realize were there or curbs that all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I would have missed that and gone into the street. Um, there is nothing quite as freeing as going for a walk and just feeling you and your guide dog working seamlessly as a team and, you know, feeling him push you slightly to the right so you can get around an obstacle and then pull you slightly to the left so you can move around another obstacle and turn because he knows that this is where you turn and because you've done this route so many times together. It's the best feeling ever. It really is. And it's one that I don't think I will ever fully get used to. I, I'm never fully going to just be like, oh yeah, this is perfectly normal, whatever. Pfft because it's just so amazing to me. It's absolutely the most wonderful feeling ever to just have that level of confidence and independence that working with a guide dog gives me. Um, I also feel like I stick out a lot less with my dog, which also gives me a level of confidence that I didn't realize I was lacking, um, which is funny because <laughs> You know, you see a person with a cute dog and the first thing you say is, oh, dog, you know, and in some ways he, you know, actually brings a lot more attention to me than just using my cane would have. But I feel so much less awkward and I feel like I don't have this big, bright, white stick just announcing to the world that, hi, I can't see. You know, I have a dog now and he's much more subtle. <laughs> So that, you know, I still can't see. And in some ways, again, the dog brings a lot more attention to me than the cane would because most people with my cane did just kind of ignore me. Um, and trust me, I, I wasn't sad about being ignored. Don't, don't feel sorry for me for that. Um, sometimes I wish I still had that level of almost anonymity. But because working with the dog just gives me so much more confidence and I can move through the world so much more smoothly and gracefully. Um, I don't feel as awkward and I don't feel like I stick out quite the way I feel like I do with a cane. Um, and he also allows me to move more quickly. Um, I mean, I'm still not the fastest person in the world, but when I'm walking with, with Caleb, with my guide dog, he allows me to move quickly where my cane, I have to stop a little bit more. I have to explore, you know, I, I am basically with a cane poking at the world with a stick where the dog just takes me around the things that need 
taking around and stops at the things that need to be stopped at and it's wonderful <laughs> it's really just makes travel and um, just navigating daily life daily errands so much easier and just so much smoother um, and you know if I do bump into someone if I do accidentally you know miss a curb or miss a step or trip or whatever um again it's it's not the same as poking at the world with a stick and you know missing something that way and like oh oh wow because now there's a cute dog to take some of the attention off of me and sometimes it's his fault sometimes it's my fault but in any case i feel like people don't necessarily judge me as much i don't feel as judged when those kinds of mistakes happen because look at that face he's such a cute you know such a cute little guy and he just makes it um feel us awkward because even if it was my fault people are less less apt to notice and even if they do notice um more of the focus is on the dog so just socially that makes me feel a lot more at ease oh, that is very briefly my story, um, how working with a guide dog has improved my life, has changed my life dramatically. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening to me yammer on about this wonderful creature that I have. If you can hear him sighing, that's, yeah, he's in the room with me. He doesn't like when I do these videos because it means I'm paying attention to you and not to him. Um, but yeah, so, I'm really, really glad that you're here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this month's theme of guide dogs. Again, if you have any questions or anything that you want me to explore, please leave it in the comments. I would love to answer your questions. Um, and if you have some spare cash and you feel so inclined, um, please visit the link to my Wagathon page in the description box. Um, I would be so grateful for anything you can do or are willing to do to help me reach my goal of $400 for this, um, this wonderful, wonderful organization. So on that note, I hope you all have a lovely day, have a lovely week, and until next time, see you later. Bye.